Okay, my friends, you are in for a treat as I was. Wait till you see this. This is one of my giants, and this is a hand, and this has been DNA certified. This is the palm of a left hand, and if you look at it carefully, the tendon and so forth, very good. This has been CAT scan, DNA tested. This is a finger, uh, uh, the knuckle ball, and the tendon like this is died laying flat. And they all pretty much died in the flood as far as I can determine. And that's the bone ball. And on the other side, it eroded not all the way. So the bone ball still has actually the muscle on it. This is the tendon that runs down. See that little stalk? That tendon runs down so that it's like I want to, it makes your finger go this way and that way. Now, uh, and then this is the fingertip. That's been cat skin. DNA tested. Anyway, you're going to see all this stuff, but wait till you see this, and then at the end, I'm going to give you all the same stuff I always show you. I'm going to show you the type, and I'm going to show you some other stuff, but it, right now is coming the meat. <laughs> Here it comes. I love this. Now, everything he's asking, I have, and I can produce, and I have the evidence to support my claims. He asked AI, if we assume, hypothetically, there is overwhelming evidence backed by scientific study with DNA analysis, radiocarbon doesn't work, so forget that, but DNA analysis of my giants and other proven methods supposing, supporting the existence of titanic-sized creatures like human giants and dragons and their connection to mountains and we want to examine how this evidence would challenge the established scientific theories we can explore in a few possible avenues. Now listen to what AI has to say about how would it affect our current science. I'm not going to read you the whole thing but it just says plate tectonics very well supported scientific evidence but if the evidence shows inconsistency or conflicts with plate tectonics, it would challenge this theory, and it does. Geology and rock formation. It would cast doubt on our understanding of rock formation and geological principles, and it does. Evolution and fossil record. Um, if the evidence indicates a significant deviation from established evolutionary patterns, we got no toes, we got giants, we got dragons, it would challenge our current understanding of evolution, absolutely. Paleontology and extinctions. If the evidence shows a substantial departure from known extinction patterns or reveals fossils that do not fit into existing taxonomic classifications, we got, like I say, no toes, we got all kinds of things. It would raise significant questions about our understanding of paleontology and extinction events, and it does. Physics and biology. If the evidence presented is, presents suggest a violation of fundamental physics laws or presents biological structures that are incompatible with known principles, it would challenge our understanding of physics and biology. It does. In summary, if the evidence you described, which is just this one little description here, if that evidence you described were to exist and be rigorously validated using scientific methods, which it has been done, it would trigger a comprehensive reassessment of multiple scientific theories, including plate tectonics, geology, evolution, paleontology, and physics, and there's more too. Scientists from science, space and all kinds of stuff. Scientists from various disciplines would collaborate to examine the evidence. No, they won't. They, they run and hide from it. They should conduct new research, which they don't. They, they refuse to. They should propose alternative theories, which they can't. They, I, I have too much evidence that can explain the observations. So they can't, so they hide. The process would involve rigorous debate, peer review, and the accumulation of additional evidence to ultimately refine or revise our understanding of these scientific principles. I have done all this. 100% of science needs researching researching. We don't need academic denials. 
and this researching has started. I am seeing they are coming around. I'm seeing little nibbles here and there of everything that I've been talking about. And a lot of other people are talking about it too. It's not just me. It's starting to be able to be discussed and be able to be talked about. That's the problem. If you were to talk about this 10 years ago, which I was, you would literally lose everything, which I did. And um, But, I, you know, I, I was at a point I couldn't be fired from a job or anything, and I really didn't have any friends to worry about. They, didn't, they weren't interested in any of this stuff, so I went on my own. That's fine. But now I want people to be able to understand this and discuss this openly. That's the key to understanding and science and learning. Open discussion. Open discussion. Yale, after years of forcing it down their throat, they did publish this paper that says, yes, Roger was right. <laughs> I didn't see anything about Roger in here, but it says exceptionally preserved soft-bodied creatures. That are Etocarda, biota, gotta, gotta, gotta. All that means is bodies of creatures. And they say from the very tiniest to the complex, macroscopic, multicellular, everything. If fossilized, yet how the fossils preserve remains controversial. No, it doesn't. Now, they published this in 2016, uh, and I had been working, trying to work with Derek Briggs, who refused to work with me for years before this, several years at least. And I wrote a book 2015 saying, you know, these people are lost. They won't do, do with their job, basically. They just won't, won't do what they're supposed to do. They won't even examine what I have. DNA, CAT scans, specimens, chemistry. Right down the street from Yale. I'm really, literally, I'm, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops if there was traffic. Now, they say, they claim exactly what I claim. Rapid precipitation, silica cements, high silica saturations in the state of the oceans. One worldwide layer. That means the oceans were all over a single layer all over the world. They can't hide behind this. They go throwing all these fancy words in here, endocard of this and biota that and all this stuff. It doesn't mean anything. It was the oceans because it coated the world. Exactly what was said in the ancient text. That's why they hid this. And now they're starting to get some reads on there. Now they got 199. When I, saw, I just realized they had put this up here just a few months ago. Uh, you know, it was uh, to me, it was snuck in in the background because that goes a year after I was denied access to them, told I was a crazy person. They say the exact same things I say. And now they're starting to get some hits. They're up to 199 views. Wow. Almost the whole world's going to know about this. <laughs> I think they were only like at 140 when I started saying, look, they're saying the same thing I said. They took credit for it in 2016. I had this out long before that. And I had, I did all the things Derek Briggs said to do. You're going to have to have CAT scans. You've got to have DNA. You've got to have chemistry. Did it all didn't matter. Okay, my friends, this is just too much. I had to stop. I was in the middle of doing the light research stuff. I got this from a friend on Facebook, and it relates to Typhon, who is a gigantic dragon attacking this gigantic fish. I've shown this a bazillion times, and I have, of course, the giants and minor DNA certified. This is Typhon here, and you may not recognize it just looking at it, but I ha outlined him, and I'll show you closely, just so we don't lose each other on this, all right? Here's what he looks like when he's highlighted. That's his dragon scaled throat, and he's got, he's got his t actual throat in here, and this is the outside of his scaly throat. He's got a flaming eye. He's spitting stuff down at that gigantic fish, and here's the whole layout here. Here he is. That's his head. That's only, I was only showing from here to here. I mean, this thing is gigantic. It goes across, all across North Africa. And he's spitting this stuff at the fish. Shown this a million times, so I'm not going to belabor this. I'm going to give you one quick shot at this. All right, so if you want to come back at it, come back later. I'm going to zoom in. There's the fish. There's Typhon. Here's the fish, and here's his actual scales. You see the scales? I'm not kidding you. This is a fish. You got Google Earth. You come up and look. There's his fin. Here's all the stuff spit down at him. Here's Typhon's head. All right. There's his flare, flaming eye, and this is exactly the way they claimed he had a flaming red eye, red eyes, 
All of this is runoff, and this is his dragon scaled throat. Runs all the way down to his dragon tummy. Now, what does it look like uh, where the dragon scales are? Well, they look like dragon scales. How about that? You see them? All right, take a second and just look. Let me back out so you can see the whole thing at once. Here he is again. All right. All of this stuff from here down is runoff. Dead, decaying, fluid runoff of red and black, bloody, death, death fluids. And here is his throat, and here's that flashy stuff. You see this here? That's all that flashy, fluty looking stuff they have on the parades and the dragons in China. It goes all the way down his throat. You see that? That's not an accident. That thing goes all the way down, you see it? All the way down, all the way down. And that's how they have them in the parades. And this thing is absolutely enormous. These are his legs. And it goes all the way out and this is his dragon scale tail. Now I'm going to leave it at that for now. Alright, there's his tail. And this is again, run off of a dead decaying dragon. So, this is for certain. As far as I'm concerned, if you can prove me wrong, I'd love to see you prove me wrong. I, I got dragon scales coming out of my ears. And in addition to that, he, his throat was cut right here. And that's where the blood running out. And it says in the ancient text that Zeus cut his throat with his great and mighty sword. That's what happens when blood runs out. It makes everything grow green. And that's in the middle of the desert, growing more green than anything I've seen. And that's slashed right across. That's blood. I showed it a million times. It's ferrous oxides. It's, oh, that's just ferrous oxides. What do you think blood is? It's iron. And one of them is the O3 version. One of them is O2 version. Oxides. O2, O3. Oxides. You just don't think. They just, oh, this is iron oxide. Well, duh. All right, now check this out. This is my stuff. I have DNA reports. I have these giant fingertips. You see that? That's a fingertip. That's the fingernail. That's the thing to bump there. And this little piece I broke off, and it still has the fingerprints on it. And here it is right there. Those are the fingerprints. Those are the ridges. And in between the ridges, it's a little, just like on your fingers. My thumb is the width of one fingerprint ridge. That broke right off there, and I went deep down inside into where it's saturated with blood. You see how much blood is in the fingers? I went down and in, right into the exact blood, literally blood. And I'm not kidding you, blood comes out of these things. And uh, I also did this other one. Um, I'm not showing too much of it, but I had a CAT scan. That's the back of the finger. That's the um, tendon. That's the other tendon. That's the vein side, that's the artery side, the two different colors, that's the bone. And this is a thumb. This is actually a right thumb. You see how your, your thumbs, they hang over the edge? <laughs> that's how I know it's a thumb. The bone is here. <laughs> All your other ones are straight in line. So anyway, and it's, it's actually flawless. It's, um, you can see the fingernail and everything and some other ones. Well, here, here's another shot. There's where the fingernail was. It's a little worn down. <laughs> you know, it's been hanging around for a few thousand years. Uh, but that's all. Not much more than that. And then we had Jim Burchill and Arlie Caudle had this head from Kentucky. This goes back, oh, 2014 or so. And I presented this to Yale. I said, will you please take a look at it? Nope, we won't look at it. I said, well, what will we have to do for you to look at it? Oh, you'd have to have a CAT scan. And I said, where? And they said, University of Texas, Austin, what we use, we did that. It still didn't matter to them. Scott Walters showed this on TV, and I think it was less than one minute. Absolutely carved, no question whatsoever. He says, ah, this is just ferrous oxides. Well, that's what blood is. Who would carve the nose to be like that? Do you think somebody carved the nose like that? I don't think so. This head is caved in, and it has a, a cap on it. It's actually, you can see the weave in it. And Jim, I never touched this head. Don't need to. I could tell you if you, you and the CAT scan was te actually terrible from the University of Texas, Austin, absolutely terrible. And I had a question about it. They refused even to answer me. That, and it ended up very, very bitter. Now, he was able to slide a playing card up in there. This is like a, some form of a cap. 
And I think the guy's head got crushed in. Okay, what I want you to do is come up here and join the group. And a Brock is going to be run, a Brock Etheridge. I'm going to be just basically the one posting and everybody will comment on my research. It's just basically devoted to my research. I don't want to get it contaminated with a whole bunch of other things that will cloud my claims because everything I'm claiming is a hundred percent against everything you've ever heard. I'm serious, a hundred percent. So it's Roger Spur with two R's and then in lowercase material lowercase research. I have another one up there that has a capital M, a capital R, and that I closed up. And you can't get rid of it, so I have to leave it there. Um, this one is, but I do all kinds of stuff. Here's the light research. Okay, this is all the light research. And then there's all kinds of stuff. But um, primarily, uh, well, it's everything. It's, it's so it's not just one thing. Here's the, here's the mud fossils. We're going to be going through everything. This is going to be the school. This is the guy, Patrick Cody. And uh, this is the absolutely fabulous. You'll see this in a second, or you already have seen it. Okay, my friends, this should be very interesting. Can artificial intelligence be brainwashed? I think it can. That artificial intelligence says, oh, they're going to do a rigorous review of this certified evidence. No, they won't. They ignore it. They destroyed Velikowski. The artificial intelligence is, is already brainwashed. It's menticide. And, and all of these people that go to these schools, they, they suffer from menticide. It's a systemic effort to undermine, destroy a person's values and beliefs. It's like just like that teacher said, they're the ones, they're too inquisitive. They're asking everything about these giants. I can't stop them. They're idiots, basically, is what, what they're saying. That's the problem, is the menticided teachers. AI has now become a menticided teacher, as far as I can see. It, it, it already assumed that there is an academic interest, and there is none. So they better pick up on that somehow. Okay, as I said, I, I've been pushing this for years, and I have all the evidence that supports everything I'm saying. AI thinks that they're going to just jump on and investigate this and debate it and so forth, which is what they should do. So AI has, for, as far as I'm concerned, is menticided. It's already been contaminated with mainstream statements that say, we are the ones really looking for truth. Nobody else cares about truth. We are the ones conveying truth. So what we say is more important than what anybody else says. Just like you said, it's mainstream. Well, we, we, you know, the AI said, this is well understood, but if you have that evidence, that would be a serious contradiction and it would have to be looked at. And we would look at it, of course, because we're scientists. No. AI might be a scientist, but it cannot force the fingers and eyeballs and ears of the other actual flesh and blood scientists. They appear not to be movable. They seem to be locked in stone, their own minds, actually.